Hi guys, Simon here, Simon's Tales. We're on to episode two already. Last time we left this, um, builders were in the bar. Been there about a week, really moving on. And uh, still no sign of Frozen at this moment in time. I was trying to work out the, the dates of when I started this bar. I seem to think it was after Songkran. So it was coming up to sort of middle of the year when we started this work on this first bar back in 2001. Now, at the time, the builders in, everything looking good. Time for a contest, Sharky Bar, second road. I was off, there was a competition in the evening and uh, I wasn't gonna miss that. I hadn't played for a week or so with uh, doing the circuit. Not having Frozen there as sort of backup, um, I got a bit lazy. But this particular night, again, no sign of Ning anywhere. This particular night, competition on, up I went to Sharky's, up on second road there. And uh, normal crowd, the Belgium guy wasn't there, which was really good, good news. So I fancied my chances. Um, wasn't as many people and uh, the prize money was lower it was about 8,000 baht for second place and about 28,000 for first so there were about 50 entrants but a few of those were the girls there was about five of the bar girls there who worked on in there entered so obviously the manager just enters them and uh, whether he pays or not, I don't know. But I remember this night particularly, it was uh, one that stands in my mind uh, and probably always will. The the boss's, I still don't remember the guy's name, but the boss's uh, girlfriend, who she was the best pool player out of the girls. And um, I played pool against her quite a few times practicing and a couple of times in the contest. Um, now this wasn't killer pool, this was we were playing uh, nine ball and it was best of three and then the final, the semis and things was best of five I think I remember rightly, maybe best of seven for the final. But I remember turning up and feeling good and working my way through, no problem, um, got through to the last four and the boss's girlfriend was in the last four. She was playing some guy, and the, uh, I don't know, but anyway, he was quite good. And I got a guy that I'd never played before, um, and I thrashed him in the semi. I got through to the final. Whatever happens, I was going to walk away with 8,000, but I was over the moon. When you've got that feeling that you're guaranteed a win, it just relaxed you and made you play better. Um, and who did I get to play against? For the first time ever in the final in Sharky's bar was this boss's girlfriend who I, as I said I played quite a few times and I thought oh no she was good she was really really good and she was quite strategic but I felt that I always had the upper hand on her anyway into the final I went and I just played rubbish I just could not get I think I peaked too early and I lost she beat me well and truly something like 5-2 she played really well and I played really bad uh, first time ever being beaten in the that Sharky's competitions by this girl she was elated the boss was as well whether she got that money or he did I don't know but she was jumping, I'll never forget, she was jumping around and running around the bar and absolutely, it, was, it made her year. She was over the moon and I was glad, I mean, she was. She played better than me. But I lost to a girl. That was embarrassing, as guys in our ego. But she beat me well and truly. Um, but I picked up 8,000 baht, so that was brilliant. <coughs> and uh, I was happy with that. But I remember that night for a long time, well, forever. Anyway, picked me 8,000 baht up, had a drink, off I went. 
um, and it was about 10 at night. I remember I'd had no girlfriend for a while. I went just down the road, Atlantic Bar and the bars next door where Ning used to hang out. And the girls recognised me and I chatted to them all. And I had a few drinks in there, had a good night. And then lo and behold, must have been about midnight, I get a phone call, frozen. She's back. And I'm okay, you're back? You're back at your room? And I said, well, it's midnight, I'm heading home, heading back to the room soon. And she's like, okay, I'll catch you in the morning, I'll come down. I said, great, no problem at all. Brilliant news. So off I went on my own, back to my room. Um, dropped into the uh, into the soapy and uh, I don't know why but I, had, I, I just drink coffee late at night and had a coffee not a beer it was free no winky she wasn't around I think half hearted I was hoping that she was there and finished work and you know a bit of companionship but no wasn't around so uh, don't know where she was no soup just a cashier so coffee and that was it I ate the sack but looking forward to the next day to telling Frozen all about what's happened next morning about 10 lazy in the mornings you just wake up late it's no rush no alarm clock woke up about 10 ish got up showered threw some clothes on and uh, fancy to walk down the beach and then I'll cut up to some breakfast somewhere having these uh, sort of breakfasts back then it was about a hundred hundred and fifty baht for a good breakfast so it wasn't that cheap but it was okay walk along the beach uh, as I'm heading up towards second road phone rings frozen she's at the room on her bike and I said I where I was and I was going up for breakfast so she's like, yeah, meet you there. And went to one of the usual cafes up on Second Road. And sure enough, there she was. Came across, gave me a big hug. Um, and in we went for brekkie. So, th it was quite strange because I hadn't seen Frozen for a while. Um, she'd been with her, with her uh, I think it was an English guy, her boyfriend, long time boyfriend. And she started talking about him a bit more over breakfast before I mentioned anything. He'd gone back home for at least six months, but he was, she'd said that they'd agreed he was going to send her 10,000 baht a month. Her rent was about 4,000, 3,500 baht on a room. So that's enough for her to live on. And she was happy with that. But she sort of said, it's not real. I wanted more money. Okay. And she said she's not going to see him for six months. Um, but. I'm sure she she had a Thai boyfriend in Bangkok, <laughs> you know, there was uh, there was a guy there, so yeah. But after she finished telling me about her fella and he's gone for six months, we started to talk about the bar. Typical battery went. So I started uh, to tell her what had happened, and told her the whole story about Sue and the bar and everything else and Frozen was she was really excited um, but before it was quite strange she got really excited and then she sort of stopped me in my tracks I remember this well and she started talking about us and I sort of okay and she sort of you know there's no us um, and there won't be any us she's decided that she's going to be 100% for her guy or a Thai guy I'm not sure which but she seems she wanted to point this across that we weren't going to be ever too close friends boyfriend girlfriend anything like that going forward and it didn't make sense why she suddenly anyway so got that out of the way and I went fine we started talking again then I realized it's because she wanted the job as Mama San when I told her everything of what was going to happen, she then said, years and years ago, she had worked in a bar as a manager, but not as a mama Um She'd never worked, I don't think, as a bar girl or anything like that, but she'd never worked, she works as a manager. 
<coughs> and when I said to her that we, you know, I needed to find a mama Sam, um, she said, oh, the thing is, I don't know any, I, I know a lot of girls, but I don't know any bar girls that I could get to come and work in the bar. Do you think Sue would be interested in giving me the job? And as I didn't know the score with all the system, how it worked and everything, I wasn't really clued up totally. I sort of said, well, I'm not sure. We, best we go and see Sue. And I think it'd be great if you were the Mama Sam because I've got an interpreter then because her English was great. Um, she would be the go between between me and Sue. It would smooth things out. It also, Frozen had become like a mate um, who I was, you know, starting to trust and hopefully vice versa and it would work really well in my mind so it was perfect so we finished the breakfast and I said let's go and see if Sue's there and go and ask the best thing rather than speculating so finished breakfast I jumped on the back of her motorbike and we shot back off to my place um, it was about half eleven by then and uh, we went upstairs into the soapy and Sue's there brilliant coffee thank you um, Winky was there as well 11.30 in the morning smiling yeah um, but not smiling at Frozen <laughs> anyway sat, sat down have a chat with Sue and told Sue and uh, Frozen started chatting Sue and Frozen got on really well and Sue was fine she said that it's a great idea um, no problem at all you work well you know each other you she speaks English and it, we just yeah perfect Sue then turned around to Frozen and said well we'll start you I think it was 10,000 baht a month uh, if I remember rightly from now and you've got to try and go out and get some girls uh, plus go and have a look at the bar and everything else that was frozen was over the moon she's on a salary right now for 10,000 baht a month and it's not you know hard work <laughs> she's just got to go and talk to girls so everything was agreed it was just as she wasn't going to get a room she wasn't going to get a bike or anything like that she was just going to get 10,000 baht a month her role was liaison between Sue the cashier me but her main role is to look after all the girls and uh, sort it all out so the biggest problem for me was finding a Mama San and Frozen fitted the bill. Perfect. Got the Mama San. Finished coffee, finished the chat, Frozen's over the moon. I said to Sue, I'm gonna take Frozen down to the bar and show the bar and then we'll crack on. And Sue's like, yeah, maybe I'll see you there later. I'm gonna check on the builders. So came back downstairs. Actually I ran upstairs, got my bike keys. Come back downstairs, both bikes, on we went, straight down. Uh, it's daytime, so you could actually ride down Walking Street in the daytime, and just flick left in Soy BJ, and down to the bar. There was a, a builder's pickup truck. It wasn't a very wide Soy, but there was a builder's pickup truck down there. Anyway, we managed to get down the bottom a bit further and park the bikes. And I gave Frozen the tour of the bar. Um, she didn't recognize the bar she'd never been there before and uh, but she was like <coughs> very taken back by the fact that the walls were all mosaic tiles and it was a bit like Abu Dhabi Airport if you've ever been there then, oh anyway gave her the guided tour and the short time rooms and showed her my future room and she laughed at that absolutely <laughs> laughed the security guide rung the guy little guy was wandering around and uh, I introduced well they introduced each other to each other his girlfriend was it his wife I don't know girlfriend she was to be the cleaner she was the cleaner in that before so they live in one room she was going to be the cleaner of the rooms doing the laundry and all that and there was a little cupboard at the bottom of the stairs where all the stuff was kept so that was her domain. Builders were painting ceiling, um, lights were in, electrics were there in the DJ box for the computer. 
the bar area was being tidied up and some metal cages welded for the, all the spirits to be kept behind lock and key at night um, also company was in there measuring up for draft beer for all the pumps and things Sue mentioned that she'd found a pool table company it was only it wasn't enough room up on the second left hand side of the bar to put a, a big pool table just one of the small bar ones which were about five foot long six foot um, she'd mentioned that she'd found a company that do a slots 20 bar a game and they maintain the table they give you a new table they maintain it they empty it once a week um, the coins they keep 10 bar and give the bar 10 bar it's split 50 50 but they supply the table and queues and they put a, a scoreboard up if you want um, you know chalkboard and things and supply everything so she'd ordered all that but it was going to be another week before that arrived so that was good so it was really coming along uh, Matt, uh, Frozen had a quick chat with a couple of builders and they seemed to think that the painting and cleaning and decorating all the building work was going to be finished within a couple of days they've just got the bar stuff to do um, all the windows at the front were done the doors all fine outside area they were going to work on and clean up a bit and there was going to be uh, a new sign put up big sign which had been ordered so within a week from a about a week from then it was going to be ready to open the doors really quick so this put a bit of pressure on frozen um, she realized that she's got a week she's got to round up some girls we roughly talked <coughs> numbers with sue and she was saying 10 15 girls gonna need more girls to be able to pe bring people in drag them in from walking street um, really wanted to put girls on salary rather than having freelancers um, but she did so did mention that these short time rooms she was going to tell and for us to tell any girl that ever came in with customers and things about them because people from outside could come and use them and it was about 300 bar a time so that would be an income for the bar renting those rooms out short time um, couldn't really do it as a hotel because there was only one front door there was no doors at the back at all anywhere just a few glass brick type windows where there weren't windows there was no emergency exits real fire risk one front door and that was it so all set get in there get in there and exciting but frozen yeah straight away she's saying she's gonna have to go out at night and start going around bars and finding friends and asking around to see what's what but she had some ideas she said she should be okay to find some okay all good she's happy she's got a job but I still didn't have a girlfriend <laughs> and uh, I'd done well in the, the pool contest the night before so I had a bit of money we'll leave it there catch you on the next one I think I went out when I was naughty that night I don't know I'll tell you on the next one <laughs> bye for now